Isaiah chapter 6, reading the first eight verses, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And the post of the door moved at the sound, um, uh, at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Now, it's not talking about smoke from the fireplace. That's the glory smoke. The glory of God can appear as smoke or a cloud. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you something. When you get into that kind of, when you get into that, when you get into the glory, things are different. <coughs> Amen. When you get into the presence of God, things are different. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name forever. Then said I, this is what happened, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs off of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched from thy lips, thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Looking into the book of Exodus, chapter 3. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3, starting in verse 1, going through verse 11. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of the God, even to Oreb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Listen, here, here am I. And he said, Draw not hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. <coughs> and I come, un come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land that floweth with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Termites. Yes. I just threw that in there. Hallelujah. Isn't that kind of, you know, anyway, we got, well, it's all the ites, and the termites are, we want to get rid of them too, don't we? <laughs> now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto him, Who am I? that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now remember uh, Isaiah said, uh, here am I. Moses said, who am I? And then Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if any be found in this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem to be tried, killed. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shunned round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And, uh, you know, he had a quick revelation, Jesus is alive and well. Yeah. Amen. And then he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Notice that Jesus didn't say you're persecuting my church. He said you're persecuting me. Right. Now, see, the people of the world don't understand when they mess with the church, they're messing with Jesus. Yeah. 
And there's a season he'll put up with it, and then there's a season he won't. Amen. Amen. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, why wilt thou what wilt thou have me to do? And he said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, the church is living in, in some interesting times. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, <clears throat> honestly, the church is divided. We are divided between the secular church and the Holy Ghost church. Now, when I say Holy Ghost Church, I don't necessarily mean Pentecostal. Now, we, well, I think all, everybody should be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think it's what God, but I'm talking about the church that's really seeking after God. You've got Baptists and, Pente and, and Presbyterians and, and Lutherans and Episcopals and Catholics who seek God. Yeah, right. That's true. Now, Pentecostal charismatics are not the only ones. That's true. Amen. They, 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 you know, people outside of our circles love and seek God. Yes, they do. They're not secularists. They're not, they're not selling out their, their beliefs for the, for the things of the world. They really believe in the things of God. Amen. So just, just don't, don't, when we say certain things, don't automatically think that we're the only ones, because we're not. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now we walk in the light that we have. We want to continue walking in the truth that we have, and we want to share that truth with others and help bring them, you know, uh, into what we think, what we believe is a good thing for them to have. Right. We believe the Bible teaches, but it doesn't mean we're the only ones with, with all the truth. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, but there is the second, what do you mean the second church? The church that's the selling out the truth to be accepted. Now, a lot, I call a lot of this, a lot of the, not in that everything, but a lot of the secret sensitive, secret friendly stuff is, is secular. Amen. They just wash down the gospel so they get people in the building. Right. You know, God, God, we don't have time for that. The day we're living in and the stuff that's going on in the political world and in the, on, on the political scenes of the world and all these kind of things, I'm telling you, selling out ain't going to cut the mustard. Y'all hear you going home. I mean, all, I mean, people who, who sell out and vote for political parties and vote for political people because they got some self-serving interest in it, that ain't going to work. That's, those days are over. I mean, we, we, we've got a, we got a mess in our country right now you can't even hardly fix. It's going to take a miracle of God to fix it. Are you here? I mean, how many remember, now I remember back in the 70s when I was in high school, they were showing the sociology films already trying to indoctrinate children of that age. There was a day coming when, where homosexual marriage was going to be accepted in society. Anybody ever see those films in high school in the 70s? Okay, I saw them. They showed them to us. But you really thought, now that'll never happen. Duh. This past week they married a homosexual couple or, or gay or lesbian couple I'm not sure, at West Point in the, in, in the chapel, at West Point. Our, our, our military institutions are being played with. Our social institutions are being played with. There's a lot of stuff going on. Let's see, the church is so messed up, it's playing with it. Amen. And I'm telling you, we're, you're not, look, you cannot have the, the you, you start bringing a bunch of junk in the church and have the glory of God show up, somebody's going to get burned. Hello? Do you not know, do you not understand, do you not perceive that the stories of the Ark of the Covenant and the things that happened with that, the Bible says the things that happened to Israel were written as in samples unto us. Just another word for examples or an allegory for us to follow after, to understand. That when they came, they bring the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel and, and one of them went up to stay the Ark because it was shaking, it killed him. Now, I wouldn't like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Demons flying out of the container and all that kind of stuff and, and burning, burning people. But he, he you know, the glory, well, what, what? you can't come in contact with the glory if you're full of, of, of uncleanness. It'll, it'll get you. And people don't like to hear that. Oh, I'm under grace. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm telling you something, folks. There is the, the glory of God. See, that's why we're not seeing the glory in our churches. If God fully manifested his glory the way he wants to, it would purge, and if people got, some, people got so much junk in their life, it'd purge too much. It'd take them out. Our churches need to have a time of repentance and cleansing. If you want to be able to experience the glory of God, we're going to have to get back to where we live. We, we come with a holy attitude towards God. People don't like for you to preach this way anymore. They don't want to hear clean up. No, I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about cleaning up in your power. I'm talking about going before the Lord and say, purge me of these things. Lord, I've laid these things on the altar of God. I trust in your power to, to, to set me free and let me live a life pure before you. Hallelujah. We're not talking about, we're not talking about your hairdo or, your, or your, your burlap sack dress and your death powder that you put all over your face. You look like death warmed over three times. Now, white folks did that. I don't know what anybody else did. But white folks, they take that old white dusting powder. 
the old Pentecost women, they get that hair up here like this and it turned yellow because they never cut it. They just had it piled up with a bunch of bobby pins in it. Then they take that old white dusting powder and, put, and then put that clear lip gloss on. You're talking about a sight. <clears throat> but that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, a sight, if I, a sight, if you didn't have so eyes, you did when they got done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, some of y'all going to have to educate me on the other cultural experiences. Amen. But you know, I mean, ooh, they was holy. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about holiness of heart and holiness of action and holiness of thought. You know, we want, we, want to, we want to tap into the power and the glory of God, don't we? Well, <clears throat> here we have three different experiences in the, in the Bible. We have Eli uh, Isaiah, we have Moses, and we have Paul or Saul at the time. Notice that in, in Isaiah chapter 6, that when Isaiah was in, caught up in the vision and saw heaven and saw the glory of God, and the Lord said, who will go for us? He said, I mean, before he said that, the first thing he says is, woe is me. And then he took the altar the call and touched his lips and cleansed the iniquity. And then the Lord says, who will go for us? He said, here am I. See, the, the, the cleansing power of God will cleanse you from it. See, when you're humbled, it'll cleanse you. Amen? Amen. And equip you. Now, Moses was full of pride. I'm going to go check this thing out, dude. And he gets up there and God starts talking to him. And uh, he falls on his face and God said, I'm going to send you. He said, who am I? See, he was humbled. Isaiah was lifted up. Moses was humbled. And Paul just got it straight. Because he fell and said, who art thou, Lord? What will you have me to do? <clears throat> what will you have me to do, Lord? Amen? Mm -hmm. We want to live a life of experiencing God's glory. Amen? Daddy Seymour, back in the Zuzza Street, prophesied that somewhere around about 100 years from then, they were going to have another, um, we're going to have another Azusa Street type revival. And we have to. Look at our country. Look at our country. Now, I don't care what political party you are of. I don't care. In the last election, people voted for a pro-homosexual, pro-abortion president. Now, just forget the economics. Forget what he's promised you with health care. Forget anything else he promised. He is a pro-homosexual, pro-abortion president. Christians voted for that. Christians put him in office. Now, the election's over. You say, well, Pastor, you're, you know, it's, it, you're racist. I am not a racist. I wasn't happy with the other choice. Be honest with you. We, we, yeah, we, we needed something different than either one, really. But at least the one that was running was saying he was pro-marriage and pro-anti-abortion. I know he had changed that from his earlier in the thing. But that's what he was running on. That, that party was running on that platform. We put in a pro-abortion, pro-homosexual president, and now there's, did you know that Leon Panetta, his last thing he did as Secretary of Defense was to remove the restriction on women serving in frontline combat positions. Right. If we ever return to the draft, your daughters can go to the front line. We're in a, we're in a, we're in a sad state. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't blame the world. I don't blame the progressive liberals. I don't blame the socialists. I blame the church. Because people voted for their own self-seeking interest instead of voting according to the Word of God. And if you, listen, don't you get upset with me. But you've got to ask yourself, how could I as a born-again, spirit-filled believer vote for somebody who openly, openly didn't hide it, didn't Mickey Mouse about it, came right out and said, I am for marriage equality. There's more to that than them living together and getting a tax deduction legally. They can adopt children and raise them as homosexuals. They can adopt children and raise them as lesbians. Are y'all here? You gone home? Now, church, we got to straighten up. We got to get our act together. We got to start living and saying, it doesn't matter <coughs> if whoever I, I vote for and, and they get in office, if it gives me a personal advantage so financially or socially or what. Who is going to uphold righteousness? The Bible says the people rejoice when the righteous reign. Mm -hmm. Well, say it's so too late, Pastor. I'm, that's right. And it's time for us to repent. That's right. Church, it's time for you to repent. Amen. We say God's undoing past injustices. Hogwash. Hogwash. 
You want God to undo past injustice? Get born again. Start acting and living according to the Word of God. He'll bless you. He'll promote you. He'll lift you up. You don't need some president or some other man to do it. But when you <coughs> purposely, remember what Israel did? Now, let me ask you something. Go back. Wait, what's it got to do with the glory of God? We got to get our house clean. Amen. I said, we got to get our house clean. We got to stop being selfish and self-serving and think about things. And I'll tell you something else. And they're not pro-Israel either. We just sent four, uh, four of 16. Well, it was signed to our different president. Yeah, you can change that. We got the Muslim Brotherhood running Egypt. We just sent them four jets and we're going to send them 80 tanks. Yeah. What do you think they're planning on doing with that? Yeah. And we're sending them four, uh, 12 more jets. What do you think they're planning on doing with that? You got Muslims who hate Israel? The, the main, main theme of all the Muslims in the Middle East is kill them and knock them off the planet? And we're sending them jets and tanks? Yeah, our tax laws pay for it. You as an American citizen, we could have stopped it. We could have said, no, nope, the deal's off. That got a different, different group running that country. Deal's off. Right. Anti-Israel, pro-homosexual, pro-abortion, and the church put them in office. And not just the president, the people who had the power to keep things going. I'm going to let y'all sit there and think about that for a little while. I don't think there's anything wrong with abortion. Before I knew you, before you were formed in your mother's womb, you don't think, you ever, anybody ever seen the movie Silent Scream? Where the doctor's going with, force, with, with scissors to kill the baby in the womb, it's a little bitty thing, and it's pushing the, it's trying to push the scissors away? Don't tell me that's not a human being. They don't, want you, they, don't, they don't show that to kids in high school. Planned Parenthood just comes in and says, free condoms, free pills, and we'll get you an abortion if you, if you get pregnant. There's nothing wrong with homosexuals need love too. You know what? I know you can't legislate morality as far as saying that you, can, you, if you, you, know, you can't be a homosexual. But I tell you what, we, we can stop from having it accepted as a marriage thing and shoved down your throat. And having all your teachers come, Boy Scouts are getting ready to drop the homosexual ban. My son will never be, well, of course, I don't, my, and my grandsons will never be in the Boy Scouts. And the Girl Scouts already said a long time ago because they've they got a bunch of lesbian stuff in all their literature now. They're no longer organizations that, that teach girls how to be girls and boys how to be boys. Everybody wants to be uh, norm, the same, sameness, equality. What's this got to do with, what's this got to do with um, experiencing the glory of God? If we don't get our house clean, God's not going to be able to manifest. Y'all hear you going home. If we don't get our house clean, God will not be able to manifest himself. And we're going to have to get back to the things where the presence of God cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness in thought, unrighteousness in action, unrighteousness in purpose. And you've got to stop doing things for your self-serving interest. Jesus says, no greater, no greater love hath any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Paul said that I, would be, I myself would be, wish to be accursed if Israel could be saved. See, the love of God says, I'll forego my rights and what's best for me if it'll help them. Let's go back to Star Trek. Spock, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one, not a few. You know? And we could get, we could go off on something. That's just for this point, I'm not trying to make this a blanket social statement. We have to understand that in order to have the glory of God in the house of God, y'all hear? In order to have the glory of God in the house of God. Remember, we, we've almost gotten back to like it was with Israel. Now, how many know what the tabernacle was all about? God's glory came down into the Holy of Holies. <laughs> so he could be near the people. But you couldn't loose him and let him out to the people because it'd eat him up. The glory of God be too, was too strong for their sinful flesh. There was no life in them. And then, then when the, the veil of the temple was written twain from top to bottom and moved out, he said, I'll no longer live in a house made by the hands of men. I'll dwell in them. I'll, I'll, be there. I'll move into them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people. We become the temple of the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, the church is becoming so carnal and so secular that it's hard for God to dwell like he wants to in the church. 
and we've got to clean up some stuff. Amen. What do you mean? We've got all that when the glory of God shows up and says, now stop that, you stop it. Yeah, right. When you stop being, I'm going to tell you something. In, this, in the past few elections, had people been listening to God, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in right now in this country. Amen. Hello? But people aren't listening to God. The church is out. Forget everybody else. The church. The church alone can determine who's the president, who's the senators, who are the congressmen. The church, and I'm going to take God's going to hold the church responsible. That's going over real big. I mean, our pastors won't even talk about this. I mean, they, you know, they wouldn't talk about it because they don't want to lose members. I'm sorry, folks. Somebody's got to tell you that we got to live right. We've got to vote according to, we've got to vote and think and live according to Scripture. Not according to what CNN, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox News, MSNBC especially. Don't ever turn them on. A bunch of lunatics over there. Hello. You know, tell you you should be doing. What does the Word of God t teach us? That we're, we're to live righteously and godly. Amen? Amen. Now, Isaiah went into the presence of God, was humble. I mean, uh, was, was exalted because he was so humble about it. He said, uh, you know, woe is me, I'm unclean. Moses says, I'm going to go look at this bush. This bush is burning. He gets up there and God says, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. And he falls down on his face and God says, I'm going to send you. He said, who am I? Jesus appears to Saul on the road. He says, what will you have me to do? I am telling you that there's not enough of the glory and the presence of God in the church because people aren't doing what God wants them to do. Amen. And we got to make adjustments. Can you say amen? amen. If we want to see a Seymour type revival of, of Azusa Street, Daddy Seymour prophesied about a hundred years. We're right in that hundred year time frame. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. To see revival of the glory of God. Let me I'll tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You, it may not be happening in America, but this stuff is happening all over the world. <clears throat> there is a revival in Brazil, and there is a revival in, I tell you, Nigeria's got some stuff going on. I know there's a bunch of, of garbage going on in, in Nigeria, but they've got, they've got to have the world's largest church now. It's a half, a, it's a mile wide and a half a mile deep. Yeah. It's a mile, it's, and it's just open, it's open. It's, it's just ruse put together, a mile wide and a half mile deep. Pastor Hagen was there uh, two years ago. Uh, um, Daryl Huffman's there right now. Scott Webb, uh, Charles Cowan, a bunch of, bunch of faith preachers over there. They're starting a, a faith conference there in that building, right, or in that, that cover. Because when you get to the ends and all the, all the sides and the ends, they're just open. It's like a bunch of, uh, you know, Roofs put together. Just uh, when Pastor Hagen was there, they estimated between two and three million people were in that service. Now here's the thing: that they said that was a conservative estimate. They really believe it. They won't publish it because they don't want to be accused of exaggerating. But they honestly believe there was somewhere closer to five million people in the meeting, one service. Now listen. They've got Raymond Bible Training Centers. Mark, Matt Bream was over. They've got Raymond Bible Training Centers all over the country. And that's in, La that's in uh, Lagos, Lagos. The big churches in Lagos, they only have one there yet. They're waiting to go out. They're, they're going different. They're not going to the city and then going out to the country. They're going to the country and then going to the city. They reverse planned it. You've got a church. And they, listen, they have one, two, two or three services in that building every Sunday morning. <coughs> Hello? They run hundreds, they run, they run in uh, tens of twenties, thirties, hundreds of thousands of people in and out. And they had three, had three services. God's moving. There's places on the earth God's doing stuff. Are you here? Now, America's gone cold, but that's okay. I said, that's okay, because the church is going to have to wake up in the middle of all this mess. Yeah. We got, we, and, and we brought it on ourselves getting so self-seeking. Listen, we, we, we exaggerated the prosperity message. We exaggerated it beyond its boundaries. You're right. Go ahead. We got so self-seeking. Everything about the church was us getting rich and us having this and us having that and us, ha <clears throat> and us, not, and us having all this money and us be appearing on the next episode of the Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And it all became about us. Dad Hagen came out and preached, pre uh, wrote the book, The Midas Touch, to try to bring correction. People rejected it. Leading, leading prosperity preachers rejected him, got mad at him. I have people that were there, I know. I mean, people that I know personally that were there have told me what happened in the meeting. They rejected it, a good portion of them. 
And people kept hunking on that. And people stopped going to the churches and stopped tithing to the churches and tithed to the big name preachers or sent their money to the big name preachers because they were going to get rich. And we adopted a godless, worldly attitude about money. We began to serve. The Bible says you cannot serve mammon, God and mammon at the same time. God wants you to prosper. As a matter of fact, my message this morning was our covenant of prosperity. And I got awakened at 2 o'clock. I could not sleep. I tossed and I turned. And I tossed and I turned. <coughs> and I was getting really frustrated. And then all of a sudden I heard Dad Hagen say, well, sometimes I'm, when, I, when, I, when I'm uh, laying there and, and, I can't, and I can't get the rest or I can't whatever, I just put, the, I, I forgot, the Lord's trying to tell me something, so I put up my spiritual antenna. So I got up, went to the bonus room, took my iPad with me, and uh, I just started looking at a bunch of my different notes. And I, and I just kind of had something on this about, about the anointing. And then I got to this, this message here that I have about experiencing the presence of God, of the, glory, the presence of His glory. And that's what the Lord said, that's it. Now change your message. I had already studied and already went, was going to bed all prepared for the other message this morning. But the Lord wants us to understand. So I got back in bed at 424 this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God had a different message. He didn't, he didn't do that to me because he didn't want me to sleep. He gives his beloved rest. Amen. 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 Are you here? Amen. But if we, you know, we exaggerated prosperity, we got self-serving, we, we began to serve and we just began to pursue getting rich by giving to certain people. It hurt the local church. It hurt individuals because when the big payday didn't come in, they got discouraged and quit. Come on now. You know it's true. I'm waiting for my, I, I, they gave a testimony. So-and-so gave in the offering. And before they walked out the door, somebody put $1,000 in their pocket. Woo, everybody runs up there. Well, the, how, many, how many people do you think will get $1,000 back that service? See, we always, I'll tell you, the church is bad about this, about giving the testimonies, the worst testimony or the best testimony you can find. You know, the, the guy who was the worst drug addict, prostitute, you know, the girl was a prostitute, guy was a pimp, I mean, whatever, drug dealer. We want to put them up and talk about how the Lord saved them. We can't talk about somebody that grew up in the church and was saved their whole life. Got saved at seven, got filled with the Holy Ghost today, and just served God. They, they didn't go out and shoot up, and they didn't go out and kill people. We don't give their testimonies. When that should be the norm and not the, not the, uh, Hello? Amen. That's the best testimony you can have. Mm -hmm. I've served the Lord my whole life. Amen. I said, that's the best testimony you can have. You don't have to have a testimony that you went out and were, were horrible. Amen? Amen? Or we get the one where somebody gave some money, and, then, and the next week they got this huge return. What happens in the offering when that happens? People just start throwing money in there. They just start throwing money. We, we've got to clean up our We've got to clean up some stuff. We got to let the glory of God burn junk out of us because we want to have revivals. Amen? Yeah. Amen? We got to lay aside weights and sins Amen. that beset us and set us off course. Amen? We got to get to where we're saturated with the presence of God. That we could sing and worship God with no music, with some music. I mean, listen, if you're a church of Christ, you wouldn't have any music anyway. <laughs> no book but the Bible, no music but singing. Isn't that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right? We got to get where, we, where we're more concerned about being saturated in His presence and His glory than, what, than anything else. We got to get to where we do right even if it costs us. Hello? It's going to cost me money if I do right. Then do right. Everybody's excited. I need to preach faster. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We've got to get back to we're so saturated with his presence and his glory and we're so consumed with the pursuit of his will and his heart that we are out doing what we're supposed to be doing. That's winning the lost. Yeah. We got more people buried. Listen, I, I, I'm a, I grew up Word of Faith. I mean, I grew up Pentecostal, moved up among the Word of Faith, you know, charismatic, charismatic Word of Faith people, prosperity bunch, hallelujah. And I got news for you. There's a bunch in our circles that are more concerned with their new car than they are with a neighbor going to hell. Go ahead. And your car, you're not taking with you. You're right. But you can take your neighbor. Yeah. 
Hello? We're more concerned about, you know, getting, getting a big bank account so we can sit back on some of the islands. So I know people right now that if God gave them the money they want, you'd never see them in church again. Yeah. And let's say you happen to be at the port of call they showed up in on their yacht. I watch it on television. That ain't enough. God didn't call you to float in the ocean and watch, it, watch the church on television. <laughs> Copeland's my pastor at home. No, he's not. Right. I love Brother Copeland. I grew up on Copeland. I, I grew up on Copenhagen. Yes. Not Copenhagen, Copelandhagen. <laughs> Amen. Want to give you mouth cancer, want to heal you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen, hallelujah. I mean, that's what I grew up on. I love Brother Copeland. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to find the prophecy he gave about, the, about this current, uh, some, about the political scenes right now. See, uh, somebody posted a little bit of it. I got to find it. It's talking about the, this, the, 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 um, the, this, this spirit, this, po this postmodern progressive spirit, the, the things, we don't, it's not all lost. God's going God's to bring a judgment. Amen against the things that are happening in our country. But you know what's going to happen? When the church gets back to doing what she's supposed to do. When the glory of God's in manifestation. People get tired of what the government promises you. Are y'all here? You've gone home. People get tired of being told, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and that. And how, many, how many found it? You know, since they started the war on poverty, we got more people in poverty than we ever had before. You know, the, the, what, the 60s, they started the war, they're going to start the war on poverty in the 60s. It's worse off now than it was then. You all know that? Yeah, we are. Because I'm going to tell you something. You just can't keep giving people fish. You have to teach them to fish. Are you here? You just can't give it, keep giving hands out, handouts. And people do that for one reason, so they can stay in political power. Church, we're, we're here supposed to be helping people, not enslaving people. Y'all here? Yeah. All right. We've got to get back to the business of reaching the lost. Having a heart, to you're not going to have a heart to reach the lost unless God's t communing with you. If you're not communing with God, you're not going to have the heart of God. Right. You're just simply going to be in what's the hottest, newest, latest, greatest message for me. I, I challenge you. Listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the Baptists. I'm not talking about the Lutherans. I'm not talking about the Presbyterians, the Episcopals, the Catholics, the Methodists, the Wesleyans. I'm talking about us Word of Faith folk. Forget, you know, I'm going to talk to y'all right now. If we had two seminars in Greensboro this morning, one on supernatural debt cancellation, you can have what you say, and one on laying down your life and committing to the will of God and sanctifying yourself and touching not the unclean thing, guess which one would be full and which one wouldn't? Yeah. Out of our group. Right. You know which one would be full. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody thinks if I run over to the you can have what you say prosperity convention, they're going to get rich. Yeah. That's going to fix all the problems. No, you got you got to put off the old man and put on the new. You got to be in the presence and the glory of God. Then you can get over to the other thing and it'll work. Amen. But unless you take care of some stuff, the other won't work. Amen. The attitude of the heart is as equally as important oh, yes, yes. as the faith you release. Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The heart attitude and the obedience go hand in hand. We want to have the glory of God. We want to be able to do the will of God. We've got to clean up the church. So we're going to start with us. We're going to say, Lord, I, sancti I, I sanctify myself in your presence. What do you mean sanctify yourself? You're not physically cleansing yourself up. What you're doing is saying, Lord, any, like Nate, Nate, that song, Nate the Saints, it's an old Milan song. <coughs> Milan of Fever, more. Break my heart from what breaks yours. What's in your life that is rebellion against God? Yeah, but I don't want to do away with No, no, you're going to have to do away with that. You're going to have to do away with that. Because I'm going to tell you, the glory of God and the presence of God is more valuable than whatever that is you're holding on to. Can I get at least a grunt? Yeah, that's true. That woman on the side ain't worth 
the glory of is, is it compared to the glory of God. Amen. That man on the side ain't worth missing out on the presence and the glory of God. That went over big. I'm preaching to the people on the internet too. And I know I preached them. I found out that out the other day. Somebody, I, I was preaching something. Somebody walked into a room that, that, of somewhere I knew. And I said something and it hit them right, hit the person walking in the room right between the eyeballs. They walked right back out. Three weeks after I preached it here. Love it. So I know we're talking to people all over the world. Amen. Oh, we want the glory. We want the goosebumps. Oh, Lord, said the power just now. Oh, Lord, this old Pentecostal song. Send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. On the day of Pentecost, a mighty rushing wind blew into the upper room and baptized all of them. Amen. Oh, Lord, send the power. We want the power. We want the power. Come on. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. But we don't want to do the cleansing. Well, I'm under grace. I'm going to tell, I don't care if you're under grace or not. You're going to have to separate yourself for the glory of God so we can walk in the power. We want to see the, we want to see the dead raised. You want to see the blind see. You want to hear, see the lame walk, the deaf hear, and the dumb talk. It's not going to happen when you're committing adultery. Come on. Amen. It's not going to happen cohabitating with your girlfriend. Amen. Or if you're a girl with your gal pal, or you're a guy with your, your, your boyfriend. We got churches now that, that they're, the Metropolitan Community Church, it's like Ichabod's written all over the door of the place. They collect, I'm going to say, uh, LGBT. If you're lesbian, gay, bis bisexual, or transgender, you come there and they teach you that it's okay. They go in and show you how the scriptures were misinterpreted about those subjects and teach them it's okay. And you wonder why there's no power to change. You wonder why there's such, a, such an attack on the body of Christ. We have to walk in a place of glory. We have to walk in a place of cleansing. We have to let the things of God, amen? So, listen, Ephesians 5. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled, and the Greek says, be ye being filled. It's a tense of the verb there. Be ye being filled with the Spirit. God wants you so full of the Holy Ghost you don't have time for all the stuff. I know some of you sitting right here, there's one thing, well, I can't wait to get out of here this morning. And go, and go call Louise. You better lose Louise's number. Hello? Some of you put HBO in your house so you can sneak a little porn in. I like the, tell, I like the original series. You don't need them that bad. Hello? Now, I know I'm talking right now. I'm going to slap somebody out of your right upside the head with the Word. You got, we've got to, we want to see the glory of God. There's things God wants to do in the church, and we're playing games. Like Moses, I'll turn aside and see this great side sight because I'm under grace. You get up there and God says, get your shoes off of your feet. This is holy ground. And that's where we got to get back to understanding. The things of God are holy. And if you want to walk in those places, you're going to have to separate yourself unto those places so you can walk in them. So you can be saturated. We've had some powerful services here in the past, but that's the past. 
I want the power of the services in the present and the future. Amen. I want manifestations of the glory of God. Amen. I want to see a heart and a hunger for the things of God. And it's time to put off those things. It's time to put off the encumbrances. It's time to put off the past. It's time to put off all the stuff that holds us back. And let's run with God and run into the glory of God and run into the presence of God and let his glory be made manifest into and through us. Amen. Amen. So the sick can come and be healed. The oppressed can come and be delivered. The bound come and be set free by his glory. So I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. This is a Holy Ghost call out. Amen. Step up. Step up to the plate. Say no more of that junk. No, that's not necessarily sin. I'm just talking about selfishness. Now, you could call that a sin. But I'm not talking about things like, you know, everything's bad. You know, but self-centeredness. Mm. I just don't feel like going to church. Yeah. But you see, a threefold cord is not easily broken. The more come, the more power. Thousand, one put a thousand to flight, two, ten put, uh, two put ten thousand to flight. The more we have in manifestation, the stronger the manifestations of the glory of people who, are, who separated and prepared themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We're challenged here yes, yes. right now yes. to step up to a place of separating ourselves to your purposes and your will, to separating ourselves to the glory of God, to having more of Jesus in us and less of our own desires and our own will that we pursue after him. As the deer panteth after the water, so my soul panteth after thee. Amen? O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee, as in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, as I have seen in thy sanctuary. You hear the psalmist? Psalm 63? Long after thee, I thirst after thee. Why? Verse 3, because thy loving kindness woo, is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Remember that song? Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of songs we don't do anymore. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is better than life. Don't think this life, I'm going to tell you, if you think that all the stuff going on around you is cool and it's life and all the, you know, the electronic stuff and all that stuff is just, it's, it's more important than anything in the world and, <clears throat> you know, all the experiences you can have with this planet. I'm going to tell you something, none of this ha holds, holds, holds a, a comparison to what heaven's going to be like. Now listen, God was traveling at warp speed long before Kirk got out there. Amen. Are you here? I mean, Elijah got the first light speed chariot ride. Hello? He, he, you know, it's kind of like, beam me up, Jesus. Here comes, the, here comes the chariot. Isn't that right? Heaven, heaven's more important. The loving kindnesses of God are better than your life. That's why I bless thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we, we, we declare your love and kindness is better than life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the challenge to step away from self-centeredness and selfishness and step into the place where we say, thy will be done. Thy will. You know, when Jesus prayed, remember he said that? Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is the name of the Lord. In that prayer, he says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're trying to get our will to be done in heaven as it is on earth. That won't work that way. I said it won't work that way. 
We got to get our, we got to connect with him who is the author of life. We got to connect with him who purifies us and separates us and his presence and his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of God. Wigglesworth said he'd rather spend five minutes in the glory of God than a lifetime without it. Or presence of God. Same thing. Presence of the glory. He'd give up his whole life if he, could, if he wouldn't have the presence of God at all for five minutes in the presence of God. Because there's something there that's transformative. It's beyond anything you can accomplish in the flesh. It's beyond the limitations and constraints of your flesh and of your carnal thinking that takes you into a place that man was designed to function and to operate, and that is in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Where the wisdom and counsel of God flows freely to your human spirit and into your mind. Where his anointing destroys yokes and removes burdens. Ha, 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 ha. Where the power is available to minister his life unto the hurting and the needy. Think of Jesus as he walked through the crowd one day. And all those carnal people were touching and grabbing at him and pressing against him just so they could touch, say they touched a celebrity. But one woman who had heard of Jesus came in the press behind him and touched his garment. For she said, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue power had gone out of him. Ooh, God wants us so full. I said, God wants us so full that when the hand or the, or the touch of faith comes, there's something for it to lay hold of. God wants us so saturated with his presence that when your friends have gone off to get you lunch from McDonald's, and somebody comes along and you're able to minister to them out of the overflow of the anointing in your life when they get back that you look at them and say I've had meat that you know not of my meat is to do the will of him that sent me hallelujah to be in the presence and the glory of God so that we're changed men and women to walk in the Spirit, be in the Spirit, to commune with the Father of Spirits. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. It is the cry of the Spirit of God to the church to come out. From, remember what the Word of God says? Come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. That doesn't mean we don't go to people. Because <clears throat> we know Jesus went and ate with publicans and sinners. But in heart and life and thought, he was separated. There is a church philosophy right now that we got to water it all down. We got to get so watered down that that's just like what they got. <clears throat> I always remember this. When Peter was at the fire outside the trial of Jesus, one of the things when he, when he, when he denied him the three times, but one of the things they accused him of was this. Remember this? Thy speech doth betray thee. Yeah. He'd been with him so much he talked different. Yeah. He wasn't trying to talk like, then he started cussing. Yeah. And it wasn't the wind, it was just so he would blend in. We're not born again to blend in. We're born again to stand out. Mm -hmm. We're born again to have the goods. We're born again to have the anointing. We're born again to set the captives free. We're born again as ambassadors for Christ. Amen. You'll read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, and one of the things the Bible says to know this, that we're in Christ, and he has given unto you the ministry of reconciliation. <laughs> That's just not my calling. Oh, yes, it is. 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. And then down there he goes on and talks about how that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. We got to get anointed so we can help reconcile people. There are people going to hell while you look at the finished work of Jesus. I'm kind of picking on the gracers right now. I just look, I just sit around and look at the finished work of Jesus. Well, a lot of that, why don't you get your back end up and go help someone else see it? Y'all real enthusiastic. Amen. Now, I know if I was preaching on you're going to be free tomorrow of debt, and if you're giving this offering right now, we're getting ready to take, you're going to have, you're going to have any more troubles. Woo, you would be shouting and running. Speaking of the second offer, I announced last week we're going to take up a special offering today. Amen. Now, I'm going to close right. We're going to take the, we're going to see the offering. Are you challenged? Stand up. Say, Dear Father, Dear Father I, commit I commit to changing change. by committing by commit. to your will, your will to follow after your heart, follow after to, you. separate myself, to separate myself, to spend time with you, to, spend time to be with saturated you. with your presence and glory so the purpose and will of God can be wrought. So in, Jesus in Jesus' name, amen. amen.